What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Drunk Deer G65 Magnetic Switch Keyboard. This is a great budget option and it has really good rapid trigger. But, is this going to be the perfect keyboard for you? Let's check it out. Alright guys, and before we get started today, I did want to let you know that Drunk Deer did actually send this out to me. However, with that being said, everything you're going to be seeing in this video today is going to be my own words and my own opinions. And here we got the Drunk Deer G65. I believe this is going to be coming in two colorways. Obviously, they sent me out the white colorway, but this will also be coming in a black colorway as well, I believe. And when I received this, I didn't get any type of official boxing, but what did come included is it did come with this keycap puller. And it also came with this USB-C cable. I know that with the Drunk Deer A75, even though I don't have one to compare it to. I know it did come with a detachable USB-C to USB type A, but it looks like this one is actually just a straight through USB-A to a USB type C cable. And if I were to line up the 65 keyboard layout to what I normally main, which is normally the Wooting 60HE, so pushing them base to base side by side here, adds just a little bit length over here on the side. And then putting these side by side as far as the width goes, do the design of the 60HE with this little lip down here, it does make it a little bit more narrow. And due to the design of the base, it does sit up just a little bit higher than the 60HE as well. It does have a plastic base to it. And when I first received this, I thought that these top feet here did flip out. They don't, it's actually a part of the actual cushioning design that we'll get into shortly. And it does have the USB-C connection right here. And here's what the actual keycaps look like that come included on the keyboard over here to the right. We do have the keycaps that come on the Drunk Deer, and over here on the left, this is a PPT keycap that is taken from the Wooting 60HE. The usability and quality of these switches, they really do feel incredible. They do give you a really lightweight, smooth, linear feeling. I do have the stock liquor switches currently installed in my Wooting keyboard, and I must say that these do feel just slightly a bit lighter than those. However, for a stock keyboard, out of the box, they feel really good. The stabilizers on here feel really solid. As you can see there, I'm not getting a whole lot of play. And let's go ahead and drop just a really quick sound test. They've also made it easier to access the internals of the keyboard. With the A75, it was held together by clips and you kind of had to pry it apart, which wasn't recommended being done because of the fact that you could break the clips on it to actually access the internals. And with the G65, once you do remove the keycaps, you do have access to these screws right here. And then once you take the screws out, you can easily remove the internal base plate with the switches from the actual base itself. Another thing that makes the G65 stand apart with the internal design is like the A75, the Wooting 60HE, they do have the internal gasket cushioning design. And some competitive gamers have been complaining about the weird feedback that you get on your fingertips when using this type of internal cushioning design. So what they've done is they've come up with this external cushioning that takes place in the base of the keyboard itself. This is basically all that you see on the inside. You see the keys here with the base plate, and then you have the circuit board on the back. And the only other thing in here is you have this rubberized silicone style base that does separate the key plate from the actual PCB itself. You have all these points where you actually screw the keyboard into, and all these points here in the middle, they do feel like they're really solid. There's no Type of play or any give on these components but on the corners it's quite different even on the feet down here on the bottom these look like they're just normal rubberized feet but when you're to actually press on them as you can see there they do kind of have some give and if i were to keep pressing on this and come over on the inside as you can see here as this little design right there where the feet are, they have a little bit give to them, they're a little springy. And it also has a similar style design over here on the feet on the top. It does kind of have a little bit of give, a little bit of cushioning. And then coming back over to the inside as I'm pushing on that from the outside, that's what the movement on the internals look like. It does have a little bit of give to it. Now I wanna be very clear, I still feel like this does feel pretty solid. It doesn't feel like really springy or loose or anything like that. It does feel really stable on the desk, but again, it does give you just a little bit of movement there. So it is a little bit of a different feeling coming from personally maining the wooting myself that doesn't really have any play in it. But I must say that once I did get used to this, I, again, I didn't notice it being like too springy or moving around on me too much. I did get kind of used to the feeling and it just started to feel more natural to me with more use. All right, so one thing I wanted to demonstrate here with the external cushing design is I'm going to demonstrate what it'd be like to type on this. Then I'll be a little bit more forceful and act like I'm gaming on it. And I honestly am truly really 
really aggressive when I am playing first person tactical shooters. So when using the Drunk Deer Antler software, it's actually incredibly easy to use and I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through it step by step here really quick. That way you can get this configured properly and to demonstrate to you better how this works. Starting over here, real simple stuff, the tabloid to the left, you have the general, it gives you a caps lock LED, you can turn that on or off, allows you to reset your keyboard to factory settings and here's where you can upgrade the firmware which I do have upgraded the most current version. You can see here this keyboard does have compatibility for both Windows and for Mac, but this first page right here, it allows you to change all these different inputs. You can even change over to mouse inputs as well. So for example, if I wanted to change the escape key to a pause light, that's all you gotta do is go ahead and select that. Then you would come over here and hit the save button and that would allow you to change whatever key you want. I don't see any support yet for them adding it controller bound keys. So I'm not sure whether or not at the moment this would work with racing games, but as you can see are pretty straightforward stuff as far as the keys go. This allows you to look at the default selection on the keyboard. And if you wanted to add a type of key or function to function one, or function two by pressing these buttons, it does give you the capability to do that as well. Next up, coming over here to the sensitivity tab, and this is going to be the most important function here on the keyboard. Starting out with the actuation on the switches. So what you can do is this keyboard allows you to individually set the actuation point for each key, and then it also has these little presets over here. So if you wanted to select them all at the same time, if you wanted to do just the WASD, stuff like that. It does give you that option, or you can just hit the clear here, and again, come in and select whatever options you wanted to on your own. So let's start here with the actual key and the actuation point. The minimum most actuation point for this keyboard is going to be 0.4 millimeters. And just so you know, it only allows you to adjust it as well in 0.4 millimeter increments. So you can choose either 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and as you can see there, it just goes the exact same way all the way until you get to the bottom. And the bottom most point that allows you to select is between 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters in total. So for example, if you wanted your open door button to be a little bit quicker than your reload button, so you don't hit them next to each other and accidentally hit reload as you're trying to open a door, you can come over here and you can set R for reload to a little bit of a lower actuation point. All right, next up, let's talk about the bread and butter, which is the rapid trigger. As you can see here, starting out, if it is at the 0.0, .0 millimeter, then that means that rapid trigger is actually disabled. So when rapid trigger is disabled on the keyboard, what that means is right now, as you can see, I'm activating the switch, and I'll show you a more clear example of this while I'm actually using the keyboard itself. But if you did not have rapid trigger enabled, let's say you press the key down all the way, the key does not reset or let up on the input until you get all the way back up to the top. So I do have the actuation point set to 0.4 millimeters. It's the lowest you can get. So I'll start pressing on the key here and I'll show you about what 0.4 looks like. So as you can see there, just push it in slightly a little bit and it starts to activate the key. Now you see this red color here. When I continue to compress the key down, it remains red. And if I were to slightly let it up, you're still going to have that action inputting to where you're still going to be strafing or whatever you have this key bound to. And without rapid trigger on, the reset point for the key is at the very top of the switch. So as you can see there, as soon as you see it change colors from red to that yellowish color and start just randomly changing colors there, that is when the key is actually deactivating. So as you can see, without rapid trigger, if I were to constantly feather the key or something like that, I'm still getting the input and it does not stop let up. 
until you reach the very top. So if you were looking to get rapid trigger, the rapid trigger works on this keyboard in increments of 0.2 millimeters. So if you're at 0.2 millimeters, that's going to be the most sensitive rapid trigger setting. And as you can see there, just keep going in 0.2 millimeter increments and it allows you to go all the way up to 3.2 millimeters. But let's say for example that we want to be at 0.2 millimeters and I'll go ahead and hit save here then what would actually happen is once you press down the key as soon as you slightly let up at 0.2 millimeters it's going to reset that trigger and if you want it to remain halfway down and just constantly feather it every time that you press down you're going to be enabling the input and every time you slightly let up 0.2 millimeters it's going to be disabling that input and let's go ahead and head over to the keyboard where i can actually show you on the keyboard itself lighting up what that's going to look like in real time now if i were to enable rapid trigger and set it at its lowest setting at 0.2 millimeters so if i decompress the key at 0.2 millimeters it will reset this is what it's going to look like so again we're pressing on the key once i hit 0.4 millimeters it's going to activate now if i just slightly let up as you can see there, I'm barely letting up and it's just resetting. So I can sit here and feather the key, no matter how low I am down here, if I were to go all the way at the bottom and just slightly let up 0.2 millimeters, it's just gonna constantly reset that trigger motion. So you can constantly just barely creep forward. You have little micro adjustments you can barely make movements with. And it's super fast if you're just walking around, you need to get that input as soon as possible, as quickly off the key. That way you can center your aim and hit more accurate shots. And again, just to let you know, you can individually set each one of these keys. So if I wanted escape to have 0.4 millimeter actuation and a 0.2 millimeter rapid trigger setting, I could set the escape to that and then say I wanted to come over here to the one key, say I wanted this to be a 1.2 millimeter actuation and then I wanted the rapid trigger to be at 2.4 millimeters or have it off, whatever I decided. Once I adjust the settings and hit save, as you can see here, it's gonna save those settings on the one key. And then if I were to come over here to escape and deselect that, as you can see, as I left this on the 0.4 millimeter actuation with the 0.2 millimeter wrapper trigger. So really cool that it allows you to completely customize and individually fine tune each key. All right, and then finally over here, we have the LED tab. And I'm not gonna go too much in this, but this does give you a bunch of different presets. The one that I was demonstrating with the rapid trigger, that was the light by press function. They also have this custom color mode where you can just kind of come in here, select different colors, and then select the keys that you want those colors to be. So you really can customize it just about any way that you choose so. And then that's aside from all these other different types of presets that it comes with. So the RGB on this, it actually looks incredible. It's very bright and it lights up very well. And then finally coming over here, you do have this macro tab and I don't typically play around with macros too much on my keyboards. So I didn't mess around with this function too much, but as you can see here, pretty straightforward stuff. You can go ahead and enter your macro commands, save it, and then you should be good to go. All right guys, so that about wraps things up here on the Drunk Deer G65. And when it comes down to the actual performance, I truly have been impressed how great this feels in game. The switches feel incredible. All right guys, so if you have any additional questions, or feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed watching this video and you are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next one